Hi guys, and um, welcome to the next episode of our monthly webinar. Um, we are joined by Rita Mara, who's a fusion music artist, and we're really keen on exploring um, her journey into, into being a music artist and a successful one, and uh, some of the challenges she would have faced, and also some of the great work she does around linking music with well-being, particularly around uh, music heals. Um, but before we actually do go a little bit into that, uh, Rita, uh, thanks for joining us. And um, would you like to, um, you know, introduce yourself and, and tell people a little bit about you? Yeah, sure. Firstly, ladies, thank you so much for having me on. It's such an honor to be here with yourselves, Manisha, Avi and Sabrina. Um, I'm Rita Mora. I'm a music fusion artist. I'm based in London. I've been a solo artist in my own right for the past 11 years. Um, it's been a hard graft, um, but every, every journey is um, wonderful, uh, every pathway that I've been taking. And the more I delve into music, the more I learn about myself and my art. Um, so here I am today. So let's start off with, um, you know, like this journey. That, that you embarked upon, especially because uh, I know and look, you know, I, I've, I follow your work and I have done for, for a number of years. Um, and I think it's really inspiring, particularly around your perseverance. Yeah. So as we know, music, just like sport, um, <laughs> it is very competitive. Yeah, okay? It's a very competitive industry. Mm -hmm. um, I might be wrong in saying also maybe saturated. Yeah. So lots of people who are talented in that in that space mm -hmm. um in, in in their own way mm -hmm. how have you how have you found that journey and then how have you found that journey also being a female and then you've got the part of being a south asian female mm -hmm. and what would be i guess that the ending to that would be are you where you want to be so is your ambition to be a, a full-time artist mm -hmm. um or it may not be um yeah, I think that's a number of questions. There. <laughs> yeah, if I can remember. Um, so my pathway hasn't been very straight, you know, and I, I didn't expect it to um, because the graft started from my own work, really. And I've always been a grafter, whether it whether it's in life, music or spiritually. Um, I've actually I, I music in my life has been there forever. I'm not even exaggerating started singing from a age of eight in um, religious gatherings. Then it moved on to me being part of an amazing Bollywood band um, at the age of 16, where I used to sing all the Bollywood songs on stage. Uh, but at the same time, I was studying as well. My mother and father and my family always encouraged me to follow my dream, but at the same time, have something to fall back on. Um, so I had that. And then I got married and then I came out of music for a little bit because I felt I needed a break, but um, it was the biggest regret of my life because I thought now I've lost music. How am I supposed to carry on my passion without having a band behind me and so forth. Um, but then uh, it was the days of my space where um, music came back into my life where I started to connect with different artists and I thought to put myself out there as a solo artist and um, back in 2008, I was actually recognized as being a background singer uh, um, supporting somebody in a reggae rock band called the Phoenix Rose, which gave me the, the confidence to come back as an artist. But I never thought, Manisha, that I would actually end up being a solo artist in my own right. And we talk about pathways and we, we we, th we think, yeah, okay, this is going to be my path. I'm going to be a background singer. I'm going to just enjoy my music and do what I need to do. But then I didn't know that I'd then become a solo artist. Then people would start to want wanting to be listening to my voice rather than me supporting someone. And then that's when I also gained the confidence of um, sharing my own lyrics, which is very which was very hard for me to do because in the past I've always been knocked back. So for me to put myself out there in my art, and as you ladies know, you know, it's quite hard as well to sometimes um, portray the, the passion that you want in your way because you feel so much, but then you don't know how people are gonna perceive it. Um, so that was very, that was, I would say that was very brave of me to do that, to go out into a world where I didn't know where my path was going to be as a solo artist. But I was lucky enough to have had the support at a very, 
early stage of my life, for example, BBC um, giving me the platform to be a BBC introducing artist, which I'll never forget, and um, uh, other uh, DJs as well, giving me that time and day to listen to my, my voice. But then I started to connect with other like-minded producers and artists who could understand my music. So I wasn't actually given it on a plate. I was actually networking out there. And to this day, I'm, I'm still doing that, still grafting my way. I'm an independent artist, a female artist, always wanting to be heard. But at the beginning, when I did start, I won't lie, it was, it was such a struggle because obviously there are established artists out there um, but then at the same time of doing music, I had to also have the business acumen to keep myself going as an artist. So I had to learn how to do my own marketing, put my own website together, uh, put a SoundCloud together where people can hear my voice, um, invest in a, uh, um, a home set studio, uh, which is, you know, it's not lavish like big speakers, but it's just enough for me to be able to record something at home. Now, uh, we're talking about pathways as well. Um, I did have knockbacks and I till, uh, still to this day, I still do get knockbacks. I went to a few auditions that I got to the very last stage. And then I thought to myself, that's where now it's going to be, become full time or it will give me that, that door open. But then it's, it's either rejected or, or closed on me. So then, then I, I, I start to feel that I'm back to number square one, but then I remember how much I've done myself in resilient, resilience to the industry and cave my, own, cave, cave my own pathway in terms of following a trend. So I, I just hone into that and hone into that strength of what I believe, what my music is about. And Manisha, you, you've seen as well on Twitter, you know, sometimes I do, I do have that frustration that, you know, where, where something isn't supported or something isn't um, given the full credit because I know so much of the work that I put in myself, but then I, I have to take a step back and analyze and, and say to myself, okay, this is not my time now. I need to just keep persevering. And that's what's been my strength really. And especially coming in lockdown, I think lockdown has been the game changer for me, for me and my music. Although I've been established as an artist in London, in the UK, I'm actually known in worldwide, um, but I haven't, I'm not so big enough to get verified on Twitter or Instagram yet to, to be recognized in that way. But then however, um, lockdown has been the game changer for me where I've been able to work on my own EP, put it out and, share it with the world and um, also create Music Heals, which is a, a series that I host every Monday um, and getting on like-minded creative indi individuals of what music means to them. And that's something as well, ladies, that I never anticipated in my life that I would do. It was an idea that came in 2018 and it was actually going to be a, a WordPress blog. Um, and then it was going to be on radio and then it got rejected on radio. And then when lockdown hit, I thought it's now or never. So the path hasn't been straight, but it's one that has made me stronger and made me understand the value of my passion and to be focused on what I'm actually trying to put out there. If I, if I can become a full-time artist one day in my life, that will be a dream for me come true. But however, at the moment, it, you know, I'm still able to do music as well as my day job. So I mean, I, I can't really complain. God has blessed me with the two pathways. You know, there's so much you mentioned around um, perseverance and resilience, uh, like connecting with other people. Yes. Um, and it really got me to think about when we're, you know, be it adults or young people, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about try and be versatile. Yes. Or there's a phrase that I commonly use, which is try and gain um, a, a toolbox that allows you to transfer skills mm -hmm. in, in whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And how, how important has that been for you? And what, what key things specifically did you do to allow you to be versatile so that mm -hmm. you do have this strength and courage to bounce back from, from a setback so that you can, you know, like you said about it, you, you've got to become a businesswoman. Yes. You know, 
uh, but also have a job and a family and, and all mm-hmm. these other things. Mm-hmm. So what, what key things would you say helped you to, to understand, right, I need to be versatile? And what do these key skills look like? So versatility in music is, is just amazing because when you have music in your life, it's not just, again, we talk about pathways, but it's, it's not a pathway that you just go down one route, you know. Um, I've been able to hone in into my skills of learning every day something new, whether it be um, uh, my voice, my vocals, or even learning the piano. You see the piano behind me. You know, three years ago, I, I took that up because I wanted something, I was getting... Um, Uh, aggravated that I wasn't able to get any solo musicians to support me they were either busy or they just weren't available and so I thought to myself let me start learning how to play the piano because I can play the harmonium so that's a skill that then I ended up doing and I've got my grade one and I'm working towards my grade two and then I had to learn how to read music so what I'm trying to say is that Music can be so varied in the pathway that you go down, whether it's a artist or a musician or a presenter. You know, Music Heals for me now is, is, has opened up something. I, I know it's opened up because a lot of people are talking about it, um, but I haven't actually acted upon it yet because I've just been working and trying to build up Music Heals um, as I present them myself. So my tools have been my my strengths have been really one of compassion and one of empathy to understand that it like certain artists struggle to be heard because I've been there I've had trauma in my life but music has healed me hence why I called my series music heals and that's why I always pondered why uh, what music means to other people and and it's just a non-scripted conversation so the tools that I've had I've tried to apply into my music whether it be having patience with certain people that I um, collaborate with um, having the empathy on certain uh, um, times in my life where I, I feel not to make music but then if I'm not making music then I can learn the piano or I can you know, read and get inspired by watching other artists as well. Um, it, it's such a it's such a circle. It just goes round and round and round. And you can never be, you know, I mean, you have ustads, you have gurus, you have teachers that will be um, um, excelled in their expertise of what they do. But I feel with music, it's ever evolving. So it will never stop. You know, there could be a new genre that comes out tomorrow that I'd need to learn on. People say to me when when, you know, I I call myself a fusion music artist because you can't put me in a box. One day I could be doing ballads. One day I could be singing Hindi. One day I could be singing English. I could be fusing the two. I just do what I feel my heart wants to do. And if people connect with it, that's great. And if they don't, that's fine, because um, we need a variety of music in our lives. So. I have, that's something as well that I've learned as well, ladies, that I can't expect everybody to like my music, but the people that do keep, keep give me that strength to keep on as a artist as well. So this is quite a lot involved. It's not just sitting back and singing. It's like writing, it's like learning, it's like evolving yourself, it's being open-minded, time skills, you know, um, so much I could go on and on. <laughs> Just um, I, and you've kind of touched on some of the points already. Um, you know when you when you uh, have experienced setbacks and yes. if you can just explain a little bit more in terms of how you overcome them and what your coping strategies were, but also, um, like Manisha said, it, it's a very um, a competitive industry what you're yes. in, a competitive yes. environment. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm sure other artists are going through, you know, probably gone through similar things or going through similar things right now. Yes. Uh, what kind of advice would you give them? as well to you know to help them with their setbacks as one well, ways that they can work around it and get through it all yeah sure V um great question um so my setbacks there have been many um personally as well the the one most setback that I had is that I actually lost my voice back in 2017 and it was due to stress and it was due to um me not taking a break from music 
And it just so happened that it, it affected my voice to the point I completely lost it. Um, and that was a bigger setback because I thought, how am I going to come back from this? It's like saying, you know, I, I know you ladies are in, into your, the field of sport. If something happened and the doctor had to tell you, sorry, you can't like play football or you, you can't participate in sport for three months, how would that make you feel? And that's what the doctor actually told me, the consultant, you can't sing for three months. If you carry on singing, you're actually going to lose your voice completely. I couldn't even utter a word. It was so heartbreaking, ladies. I, I just can't explain to you that I thought, that's it. I have to give up now. This means that I can't, I can't do music no more. But then I, I realized I had some fight in me and that fight came from the support of my family. Um, that fight came from all the music that I have created in the past and I was listening to time and time again. And so I decided to then take it on myself to just um, get a speech therapist, learn my words again, take up Pilates more than ever, and then look after my health more than ever as well. One thing is as an artist, you know, if there are people out there that are starting as artists, I can't stress enough how much your health is so important from what you eat, from how much sleep you have, from how you breathe, how you stand, when you sing, how you talk, when you, when you, when you stand, how you're talking. Are you, are you get, giving yourself enough breaths in between words? All these little things, I had to go back to square one back in 2017. Now, at that time, um, this, an artist called Hussein Manoa, who is very big on, um, uh, you guys have probably heard of him, you know, promoting um, health um, and mental health awareness through his poems and poetry and music. He contacted me when I just lost my voice in June because he was hosting a, his first ever show. And he, I remember saying to him that, I'm sorry, he's saying that I can't do it. You'll have to find another singer. And he said, what has the doctor said to you? And then I, I told him, that um, three months down the line, I have to go back to him. So June, July, August, September, I had to go back. September, um, uh, I'll go back and, and know if I can sing again or not. And he actually said to me that, oh, I'll contact you then. And I totally forgot about it because I was, you know, then going back to speech therapist back and forth, back and forth, learning how to breathe again properly for my voice. And my voice has actually come back lower than it, what it used to be. So it's much more versatile. I can actually go a lower octave now as well, you know, so which is great for my music. But when September hit, I kid you not, Hussein called me, actually texted me on the day of my appointment and said, good luck for your appointment. And I couldn't believe that this guy had held out for me. And then that, that gave me more um, to, to say, yes, I can do this. I can get, I can, I, 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 I will get my voice back. I will be able to sing again. So when I went to the consultant that day and then they checked, I had um, a thing called dysphonia, which is disorder of the vocal cords. So basically my vocal cords, they were like this and just not making any sound. And then he told me that, yes, I can sing again. And then I told Hussein and then Hussein gave me a um, 10 minute acapella. Can you imagine this? My first show back. 10 minute a cappella of a Hindi, of, of Bollywood song, Kabi Kushi Kabi Uham, because it was in a, um, um, dedicated to his mum who had passed away. But I'll never forget that moment when I sang in that, the audience, it was pin drop silence. 10 minutes of my life was the biggest lesson for me. And that just proved to me that I can't give up my music. So if there are any artists out there that are going through any hurdles in life, you've got to take it back and bring it back to yourself to say to yourself that, why am I doing music? Is it for passion? Is it for fame? If it's for passion, you, you won't give it up because music is your calling and it will come back to you no matter what, in what way. But if you have that faith in yourself and your voice, you know, nothing can stop it. And for me, that was my biggest game changer.
Uh, Rita, I was just going to ask you, um, you mentioned about the importance of physical well-being. Yes. Um, and many people know that your mental well-being is really is linked to your physical well-being. So yes. it can have effects on your physical well-being if your mental well-being is is that in a poor state so yeah. how do you sort of balance both and look after both as an artist yeah so after my dysphonia episode um and learning a lot from my speech therapist that health meant a lot I mean I used to go to the the gym before anyway but I started to learn that the right way of looking after my health my voice and it really did um it was parallel the mental health when like health being and 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 the physical side as well um so what i did is then i i gained um solace through uh, one of my friends who is a personal trainer uh, push uh, with ush and um she really uh encouraged me to take on like a um a program with her um to not only do pilates not only to do walking but to add in weights to uh, take up more cardio and just balance it all out. So the more I was learning on that, then I realized, oh my God, this is actually helping me. And, and you know, like, let, let's be honest, you know, in the music industry, you are judged how you look, you look, you know, and if I'm honest as well, they say sex sells, but then however, you know, it depends on what the, type of person you are if you want to wear like skimpy clothes or if you want to wear full clothes um I was you know I always felt self-conscious of myself that you know I was a bit bigger than the other artists but then I took it and that and then I was going to the gym all the time and I wasn't losing the weight and my mind was all over the place but after dysphonia it really changed it for me because I thought to myself if my insides are feeling good, I am going to feel good on the outside as well. And um, so then I started to take up meditation. I, I took up therapy. I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that, that I was in therapy to help me through some of the trauma that I've been through in my life. And that was the game changer for me as well. So not only was I looking after my physical aspect, I was also looking after my mental health aspect. And I feel as an empath, a lot of people are drawn to me um, and I, I make them understand certain things that they're going through. And then I, I do advise them, you know, go to therapy if you feel you need to. I am no doctor, but however, I've been able to put my situation into a way that I've learned from it so much. And I don't regret anything that I've been through in life. And I can only say that it's made me stronger. And without having my health and my mindfulness, I wouldn't be where I am today. And that, that is a fact. Then I started to do it for myself as well. So cut out tomatoes, cut out tomato ketchup, which I used to have literally with everything, but not my breakfast. Um, but, you know, uh, it's just like little things, you know, that I changed in my life. Um, but it had a great big impact on me. And, um, and, it, and it just goes to show that last year, actually, when we were in lockdown, when I was campaigning for my EP, um, I, I lost quite a lot of weight. I actually lost six kg in lockdown. And that was only purely because of me looking after myself and um, uh, my, my, my mental wealth as well, you know, like, like learning loads about myself. And um, I did a photo shoot. And I remember when I put out the photo shoot, so many ladies sent me messages and DMs to say, thank you so much, Rita because finally we are seeing someone that's like us. And for me, I never knew that I had such an impact on, on, on people out there. And then that just gave me just that, you know, that, well, you know, what I've been doing is, is, is okay, you know. And I started to accept myself for who I am as well and here I am today. Wow. Do you know, again, like there's so much in what you've said. So there's a couple of things you've really got me to think about. So one is around, um, do you know, this taboo around asking for help. Yes. And yeah. particularly from our communities, you know, um, and I think actually that taboo stems across society that people, you know, maybe pride, maybe ego, but also that, no, I can do it on my own. It's mm -hmm. fine. 
you know, I'm just going to carry on. And mm -hmm. what you've what you've just said there around, you know, that that you went to, you know, you went to seek therapy and how how much mm -hmm. of a positive impact it uh, speaks volume for actually it being OK to go and ask yeah. for help. It's OK um, not to be OK. And that's a stigma that I want to change as well. You know, like not everything is hunky dory. You know, not everything you see on Instagram is perfect. And that's why I've always tried to be authentic in, in the way that I communicate with my followers. I, I don't like to call them fans, I call them followers because it just, you know, they're part of me and they've, they followed my pathway. And um, I just feel to be authentic out there, you really got to show your highs and lows. If you don't show it, then, you know, I, I, I'd be kidding myself as an artist. I refuse to buy followers. I refuse to buy likes. You know, that, that's just me. And, and that's always going to be me. And if people connect with it, you know, then that, that's a blessing for myself. But I, you really, really need to. Because you know what it is as well, Manisha? A lot of people are watching you. And, and it's not the fact they're watching me. It's the fact that I just want to portray who I am as a person as well through my music. You know, a lot of, a lot of artists are private, obviously in their private lives and what have you, but there has to be a point where people are like watching you in the terms of they're learning from you. They're getting inspired by you, inspired by your music or whatever field you are. And if you're not true to who you are as a person, then what is your purpose? You know, what are you trying to put out there? And that's why I always try and keep it real as much as I can. So yeah, so you know, bringing out that I, I was in therapy, it took me a long time because again, it was just like, but I also I think in this day and age that mental health is being talked about far more in a positive way that people are actually saying that they're not feeling good or they're taking time out from social media or they're looking after themselves, especially more than ever because of the pandemic. And I think that's really important. I really do. It could have gone two ways for me in the pandemic. I could have just hid away. I could have just worked on my piano. I could have got my, I could have been by grade four now. I'm, I'm being really optimistic here, but you know, I'm just saying that the amount of hours and work I put in my music and music heals, you know, it, it was just like, it was now or never. And it's just how real you want to be with your passion, how you want to move forward as well, which counts the most too. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, definitely. And actually, um, you have you spoke about it earlier um, and just now as well. And this question around, you know, society, yeah. that it, society places these norms don't they that yeah. you should do things in a Standard. certain way mm. and how how do you or what advice would you give as well well I guess there'll be lessons based on what you've done anyway yeah. mm. um how do you be so bold to to not allow yourself to conform because you spoke about keeping being authentic mm. and yeah. I think whether you're an artist or or anybody, whether it's a young people listen, like young person listening in, or yeah. somebody from a, another industry, yeah. it's how you know what advice would you give in 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 terms of keeping your authenticity and not being lured into what society says you should be or should look like. Mm -hmm. Society is always going to have an opinion, whether you're married, whether you're divorced, whether you're single, whether you're full figured, where you haven't got enough weight, you know, there's always going to be something or the other. Um, what I say is that you've just got to be true to who you are as a person. Uh, you know, I've had it. I've, you know, growing up, that, like my aunties and uncles oh you've got weight on oh here comes bubbly you know there are all these little things that like could have really like swallowed me up as a female that oh my gosh you know oh god you know who am I now and um, you know who am I going who's going to listen to me you know and that's when I start when I started out and all the doors were closing on me that's what I started to feel oh, it's because of my weight it's because of how I'm looking what am I going to do um but it, as I said, you know, society is always going to have an opinion. Um, 
I've been married for so long as well, you know, there's a question that always comes up about how come you haven't had children yet? I mean, you know, they don't know what's been going on in my life. And because I've had so many struggles in my life, ladies, that I've got to a point where now it's not that I don't care, but if I feel comfortable enough that I will go out and try and learn about it or just be myself about it, you know, rather than conform to societies. I know in this day and age as well, I think for ladies, especially female artists, there is a lot of pressure to look a certain way or sound a certain way. Um, and it, it does take a lot of courage to come out of that. But then I, I think as well, it depends on who you are surrounding yourself with as well. You know, are they supporting you for who you are or what they want you to be? That's what you need to ask yourself. So I, I can't say that I'm bold. People may think I'm bold, um, but there are times where I am insecure, you know, just like any other woman. You know, it's my hair looking like even before I was like, oh, my God, you can see my grays. And, you know, I came on. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, we all have our insecurities, but it's just just like just accepting, not ex yeah, accepting them and accepting those flaws are part of you as well. And society will always, uh, you know, I could go on and on. Society is always going to have some kind of like, you know, you're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. You should do it like this. You should do it like that. Tell them to walk in your pathway. Tell them to walk in your shoes. And then have they walked in your shoes? Have they taken the pathway that you've taken? No. So just what I'd say is just put your blinkers on, not literally, but just put them on and just be focused on what you're doing rather than your competition. You know, you, you don't, you don't want to waste your talent away or waste who you are as a person by comparing yourself. And, you know, there are times where I think to myself, oh, if I was such a way that, you know, I could have got further and that my insecurities, but you just got to keep working. If I wasn't working hard the way that I work, then yeah, I would be more a bit like, oh my God, I haven't done enough. But I know that I am full speed, 110 at the moment, whether it be my music or music heels, you know, it's just the drive and the passion that I have. and I've got this far independently and I know that I could do, I can do more as well. So it's just a matter of just keep going, keeping the faith to be bold and to be who you are, not who society tell you to be. Rita, how did um, your family react when, you, you know, you said you started singing at the age of eight. Yes. Um, and we all know being part of, you know, the sports industry as well, it's yeah. difficult to be yourself within yeah. the Asian culture. Mm -hmm. um and go for these careers that don't tend to be the norm yeah um so how how have they been and how were they when you were growing up and how are they now with it yeah so, uh, you know I, i've been blessed with family that actually pushed me to do music rather than me say oh, mom and dad i want to do and in fact it was my dad that put my name down for a talent contest which is just phenomenal, you know, just being on a, a, a stage at the age of 16, singing my favorite Hindi tune. And that was more than enough for me. But I didn't think that it would get further where the band needed a, a female singer to support them while the other singer was away. And I'll never forget my mother and father supported me hands down. The community didn't, on the other hand, this is society, the community didn't appreciate it. You know, because obviously back in the 90s, I'm giving my age right now, back in the 90s that, you know, um, music was seen in such a vulgar way, um, like, you know, going to clubs and what have you. But I was so blessed in a way that I was looked after. And even when I was part of Masala, the, the amazing band I was, um, my manager, who I see as my own, my uncle, and my auntie, they looked after me, you know, as their own. Um, so I've been blessed to the point where I've been surrounded by the elder generation who have supported me to move my music forward. And never have I been stopped in any way. And my dad always tells me that, you know, do your best. As long as you've done your best, nobody can say anything to you. And every time I go on that stage or put my heart out in any song, I remember that, that I've done my best and whatever happens, happens. I mean, like my EP came out last year and um, obviously I've got so many reactions and there's one song called Blossoms in Isolation, which um, actually touches on 
the metaphor of the blossoms are out there, but I'm feeling all alone. And I was just going through everything of like trying to understand lockdown and we can't appreciate blossoms out there. And I thought to myself, who's actually going to understand that? And I remember when I gave the EP to my mum and dad, I gave them a CD, um, CD covers behind me. Um, and uh, I remember mom, my mum sending me a message saying, Rita, Betty, I heard you. I felt everything you felt. And for me, that was like my, I don't know, my Grammy Award, my, you know, because my mum, my mother connected with my music. And I can't get any better than that, you know. I. So I've, I've been so blessed and, you know, like not only my, my parents, my husband, he's been there since the age of 16, we've been together and he's seen the, the highs and lows that I've had until this day, he still supports me and my brother as well. So yeah, I haven't had any problems at, at all with my family. They've been my pillar and I wouldn't be here without them today. Rita, you've been incredibly inspiring. There's uh, so many lessons we feel that, you know, listeners will take from this around um, keeping your authenticity uh, and being brave. I know you, you know, you said, well, I don't describe myself as being bold, but it actually does take a lot of courage to do that. Uh, particularly when you're surrounded by all these stereotypes, you know, um, and like you said, you know, that where you're in music and there's many other industries like that where you are judged based on what you look like yeah and if you don't fit a certain box or you don't look a certain way mm. you know people don't often take the time to delve into your caliber and your expertise no. and experience mm -hmm. because what they do is they they look at you mm -hmm. and then it's oh, well no I think we'll move on yeah. and you've shown you know a lot of courage um, in, in, in how to overcome that. You've given, you know, lots of lessons around uh, how do you manage setbacks uh, and, and being resilient. You know, the importance of being versatile and, and having, like we spoke about, you know, this toolbox and having a having an array of skills that you can then transfer. Yes. So I think there's so many listeners that will be able to connect with so many different aspects of what you've spoken about. And you are a role model, you know, and uh, we okay. wish you all the very best with your music. Thank and we'll you. definitely be looking to to share your EP uh, and more to come. You. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. It's been it's been very inspiring. Thank you, and keep up the amazing work, ladies. Truly an honour.